Today, we will be answering the age-old question, who exactly is smart? This question is way too big. We need to break it down and start with who is allowed to be smart. But for this conversation, let's assume that schools, learning, and smartness exist to prepare people for jobs in the economy. Most of human history has been humans trying to get enough food to survive. So for most of human history, the quote smartest or best thing that would prepare you for the world was to be physically strong. As the human population grew and people expanded throughout the globe, we developed different kinds of logical, philosophical, and scientific knowledge. Zooming in on American schools, we can see that the legacy of colonization and racism left a pretty big mark on our educational system. Remember, we're looking at this like schools give us employees. And in the 20th century, as public schools opened for everyone, our economy needed a certain division of labor. Unfortunately, public schools pushed this to be along racial and gendered lines. The quote, smartest white dudes were pushed into highly skilled college educated positions, while every other guy was kind of pushed into low skilled, non-college educated positions, and most women were funneled into housework. This funneling of students from schools to a specific place in the economy is called tracking. And while not quite as along racial and gender lines, this kind of tracking and funneling people into the employment sector still lives and generally is called the myth of the meritocracy. And that's a video for another day. But for now, let's unpack the question, what does it mean to be smart? Traditionally, we've looked at smartness as IQ or intelligence quotient. IQ is not an achievement test. It doesn't test how much you know. Instead, it tries to test your potential. But potential isn't really fair either. I mean, we can't test babies for their potential. And by the time we can test people for their potential, they've already been exposed to different amounts of language, toys that taught them logical mathematical skills and number sense, all that kind of stuff. Now we move on to Education 101. Seriously, every teacher everywhere has heard this a thousand times. Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. This dude was a Harvard psychologist. He challenged how we think about smartness or intelligence and said that we could measure and value each of these different areas of our intelligence. He included these different categories, musical audio intelligence, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, verbal linguistic intelligences, logical, mathematical, natural, intrapersonal, and visual spatial intelligence with sometimes people adding in tech intelligence for the 21st century. So then education was like, great, let's teach to these gardeners multiple intelligences. So we tested kids, divided them up, and had teachers try to teach to each of these individual intelligences and quickly found out that this is impossible. But especially if we remember students become employees, this became a really helpful way for us to understand other ways that people could be smart. One of those that comes up a lot is EQ, or emotional intelligence, which kind of encompasses Gardner's intra and interpersonal intelligences. Funnily enough, experts think that 58% of job success depends on EQ, or emotional intelligence. However, it's generally not taught in school. Even though it has nothing to do with IQ, it's not really considered in our tracking meritocratic thinking. Based on empirical evidence, we know that emotional intelligence can be learned. Emotional intelligence isn't something that's wishy-washy. It can be measured and analyzed. Something that's not totally covered in Gardner's intelligences is CQ and DQ, or cultural intelligence and diversity intelligence. Like IQ and EQ, DQ and CQ can be measured and analyzed. Because diverse teams bring multiple different perspectives and multiple different ways of looking at problems, it greatly affects job performance. And while some people naturally have a higher CQ and DQ, these can be developed and learned. And that's only going to become more true as globalization continues to increase, so too will our need for employees with CQ and DQ. And last but certainly not least, let's think about who can become smart. Is smartness something you're born with, or is it something that can grow and be taught and learned? To this, there's two different schools of thought, both the strength-based, the people who say you're born with natural skills and you should just enhance the strengths you already have. Then there's kind of a skills-based thinking, which are the people who say, you can learn anything, just focus on your weaknesses. But none of these things answer the real question, the one that we all want to know. Am I smart? Or maybe even, is my kid smart? The answer is, yeah, kind of. Things that can kind of be summarized from all of this conversation. The evolving nature of the modern globalized workplace requires employees to have a diverse array of skills and strengths. 
how to differentiate, recruit, hire, reward, promote, teach, develop, learn, measure, or value these skills and strengths is an evolving discipline. And you can take all this information and say that the U.S. public school system currently overfocuses on IQ, logical, mathematical, and language skills, and therefore can't deliver a highly qualified workforce with the requisite diverse skills that we need for the 21st century organization, but that's a topic for another day. Basically, this all means that we all are smart. We all have natural strengths and learned skills. Unfortunately, not all strengths and skills are equally valued by school or employment systems, even if a lot of them should be. The smartest among us value their unique intelligences and use them to their advantage. In the end, smartness doesn't really matter. Whether we go to a super prestigious school or we never succeeded in a traditional classroom, our skills and strengths are vehicles that help us lead happy, healthy, productive, and meaningful lives. The extent to which we're doing that is really how smart we are.